We're joined today by uh, Inyaki Uruguayan, and Inyaki is uh, originally from the Basque Country. So, Inyaki, welcome back. Thank you. Yes, Inyaki. Tomorrow is or today is going to be the seventy fifth anniversary of the uh, the what we will call the massacre in uh, Guernica. How is that going to be remembered in, in your part of the world? I. Uh, it's still being remembered as a part of history that hasn't been dealt with. I just read an article in the newspaper today that the mayor of Guernica is asking the Spanish government to admit all the truth of what happened on the day. We are still in a position where where it's more or less brushed under the carpet. Mm-hmm. How is it uh, is seen in, uh, in, in, in Guernica and the Basque country itself? I mean... You mentioned there the Spanish government, but it was actually the Italians and the uh, the Germans who did most of the aerial bombardment. Does any blame really attach to them, or is that seen as part of the wider Second World War? No, like if you look at it, it's one thing is clear: the Germans actually owned the bombardment of Guernica years ago. They actually admit that they have done it, and they said that they were sorry, and they they said no, they, all these stories about being born by the Reds and all that are not true, and they own to it, and they and they ask for a public apology. The Spanish government or anybody within the Spanish army or whatever, they have never gone as far as saying yes, we give the order, or there is a paper here where the order was given and shouldn't never have happened. No. Mm. Yeah. If I uh, read history correctly, one of the uh, the thoughts was that uh, by doing that to such a degree, and I call, with uh, Dermot Brannock, I called it the, uh, the the 1930s version of shock and awe. It was designed uh, to deplete or almost destroy any sort of resistance from the Basque people, whether it was psychological, whether it was militarily. Um, did it have that effect? And uh, how is that still being played out in Yaki? I don't think that that will be... I don't know if the the effect that had... I really don't know much. If you ask most people in the Basque country or in Spain, they have no knowledge of the the war. Mm -hmm. That was disappeared. I have learned more about the Spanish civil war in the last 15 years that I have been living in Ireland Mm -hmm. than in the previous 30 years that I was living in the Basque Country. It was never talked to. I never knew that I used to go to a beach where there was a concentration camp for years before there. I never knew about the disappear. I never knew about the people that was uh, uh, the kids were robbed I, that's only that's news for me that's news uh, that's quite interesting to hear you say that Inyaki because although my family didn't seem to take part in the civil war or the black and tan the war of independence uh, it was always played out so I just wonder if that's a cultural difference that uh, uh uh, your culture is much better at dealing with the horrors of the past whereas we never seem to want to let them go and uh, we you know play them out in different guises in the future is that i mean you've got plenty of experience of irish uh, politics and irish revolutionary politics is there a fundamental difference the way if you like the past is seen i don't know like in one sense it seems that uh, the the winners got all the losers got nothing and it just went whoever was in the losing side just couldn't raise the head over the parapet. And it's still going on today. The thousands and thousands of people who disappear after the, civil, uh, the Spanish Civil War, mm-hmm. we are talking about over 100,000 people that hasn't been recovered. Everybody knew about Chile. Everybody knew sure. about the disappear in Chile. You are talking about 1,000 people. Mm-hmm. And every, the whole world knew, knew about it. Then mm-hmm. you are comparing to over a hundred thousand, and nobody, even us, that we were living there, we don't know about it. Indeed, so you've mentioned this to me in the past, and Dermot Brannock uh, brought it up uh, recently as well. Is that during the Spanish Civil War, there's a there's a few Basque provinces. They weren't all on the same side. Has that changed in the meantime? Are the Basque uh, provinces now, and I'm just talking about the Spanish uh, side of the border, not the French side, are they more a uh, homogenous unit? Are they uh, all looking for, if you like, the same either autonomy or even independence, or have some still gone with the central government? I uh, know there they are still some going with the central government. You have uh, one side, like... Actually, at the moment, 
there are four provinces and the four of them are run by a different party. Mm -hmm. Like, it's totally atomized, like uh, now the, the situation. Okay, and, uh, and what about the French side? I mean, uh, there is there much, uh, I mean, uh, uh, crossover between the two uh, um, sides of the border? Because clearly they would... Uh, uh, have as perhaps their first language French rather than Spanish uh, the way you would have it on uh, your side of the border yeah culturally they yes they they are a big relation but politically no the French are much better at assimilating other cultures like if you take into account that there is not that long ago when French language was hardly speaking uh, being spoken in France that it was spoken around Paris and a little bit more then what they did is they annihilate all the other languages. Then in the Basque country, like uh, the Basque language is in the North Basque country is disappearing fast because like it, that's the way that French do it. Sure, yeah. Uh, and what about uh, Basque culture in that sense of the word? I mean, um, everybody I've met who has an association with the Basque country is very proud of uh, uh, the culture that's there. Uh, are you saying that the central government in Madrid is in essence, trying to dilute that and uh, or even marginalise it? No. I, at, at this stage, I probably know. They I, they have realised that they, they, there is a huge potential there that if they have been fighting it for years and years and years. But like uh, the the Basque language was, uh, especially in certain areas, is so important to us that it was a, a lost battle for them. Then they... There are still sections of the Spanish establishments that they say, why don't you learn English? And why are you going to learn this language that only a few thousands of you uh, talk? You still have that, yeah. So is, uh, is Spanish uh, uh, the primary language in, even in the Basque country? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. So uh, that's, uh, that, that tends to be how culture uh, gets its hegemony, doesn't it? The only thing is that, for example, like uh, it has changed from the time that when I was in the school in the, in the 70s to now that, for example, my nephews and nieces... All of them have been educated through through Basque. Mm -hmm. They have been they have done primary school, secondary school, and two of them now they are in university and they have done all their education through Basque. They they have that those options that they were not open before. That's interesting to uh, to hear you say that because it seems like there might have been even a civil war within the civil war within the Basque country. Is that a, a, a reasonable uh, assertion? Yeah, but the same that in every everywhere, like in the Spanish state. But in the Basque country, yes. For example, uh, all what is the provinces of Araba was under the nationalists straight ahead. Uh, most of the provinces of Navarra as well, and mm. nearly all in the, few, in, the, in the first few months. And the other two provinces resisted more. Mm. Gipuzkoa fell quite quick, and Vizcaya is the one that where all the stronghold was held there like for, for months. Sure, yep. Because uh, anybody who's been to Barcelona would know that uh, the Catalans are every bit, uh, uh, would seem to be every bit as proud of their culture and their language. Uh, but I don't get to hear too much of... Uh, um, uh, th what I would call the civil war within the civil war in Catalonia. Um, is there much evidence of that, or was the was Catala uh, Catalonia much more uh, homogenous in its resistance to the central government? I think that they were more resistant, and I as well they have surrounded areas that they were on in the, under the control of the legal government for months. Like the Basque Country was more or less isolated. What it was around the Basque Country, it fell like. It's uh, practically straight ahead mm -hmm. then they didn't have the, 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 the option the, the only thing that they could keep them for a little bit longer it was that they were near the French border mm -hmm. but as soon as that was cut off they were they they were they were cut off from the what is the the republic. Sure. Yeah, the other side you've uh, you've mentioned is the uh, the role of religion in it. Now it seems to me, what uh, you know maybe my uh, uh, if you like. Uh, research has been slightly uh, sh skewed in the sense, but it seemed to me that Catalonia particularly was very secular in its resistance. I mean, uh, I don't want to go down the path of whether it was left or whether it was communist, but it seemed to me what, something that characterized its resistance was its anti-clericalism or, uh, uh, or its pro-secularism. Um, 
was that very different in the Basque country, um, or uh, uh, do, would you take on board what I say about Catalonia? No, it's you're right. It was very, very different. In Catalonia, there was a, a, a really big movement, uh, anarchist movement, and there was a very big movement, communist and socialist. In the Basque country, at the time, most of the Basque nationals, like uh, the autochthonous population, was like a controlled by the Catholic religions was very Catholic. In fact, you can see the photographs now. It was a, a, a suitcase found from Robert Capa's photographs. And half of the photographs, you can see mass being like a celebrated right at the front and things that that kind of a stuff. And that was normal. There was, in a small section, there was a couple of groups just at the time already that has a split from the main nationalist party that were already on the left, mm -hmm. but mainly the left and then were immigrants, yeah. were people that had immigrated to the Basque country. Yeah. Let's talk about the painting. Uh, I call it the most famous painting of the 20th century. Uh, not necessarily the best, but it certainly is one of the most uh, well-known images. How do Basque people feel it's a... Is it? Do they? Do do uh, the people uh, that you would uh, speak to? Do you feel this is a painting about us rather than our painting, or uh, do you see this as our painting? Uh, I don't see necessarily that has to be one or the other. Okay. It's about us and is our painting. It, in fact, there is. It has been for years the claim that uh, the the painting should be in Guernica, that yeah. is where it belongs, mm -hmm. uh, or the Guggenheim in San Sebastian. Or Bilbao, no, in Bilbao. Or Bilbao, yeah, 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 yeah I mean. prob probably Bilbao, like it is a more, mm. but but it should be in the Basque country, indeed. But yeah. okay, that's <laughs> legal things and things like that. The Spanish government will never, like I thought, they, they will relent to the ownership of is that. The, but that to me seems to be, I mean, the the, comp the logic is compelling, you know, that uh, this is a wonderful way of building bridges and reconciling a horrible past and all of that. Um, and even though it's not painted by somebody from the Basque Country, to me, the painting was always more than just a painting, it's a symbol. Um, it's, is it just uh, that lingering resentment at, uh, you know, anti-Basque that was there with Franco? Uh, there is a huge lingering resentment in a way of they are like that we feel that we are different. Then they don't want to admit that difference. For example, there was a like a lot of the stuff that was raided when the, the, the rebels went into the Basque country, they took an awful lot of material and that was all kept in a museum in in Spain and it said okay now it's the democracy whatever this and the other we want all the material back that's spoils of war that the war is over we want the spoils of war back Indeed. I said uh, no yeah. said why will you we give them back to you because if is ours? <laughs> so, no, it, it's an argument we've heard from other uh, or, uh, other countries as well, and it doesn't always hold much water. Last thing, in Yaki, and this is why, uh, um, you know, I don't want to uh, put you on the spot and say you're a fortune teller. Who can tell what the future is? For most of my adult life, the future of uh, the Basque country was always seen in terms of independence, and this is coming from the Basque country. I'm beginning to think that that's perhaps a fading dream that the the the, the, the 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 vast majority of the population would settle for some degree of autonomy or uh, some degree of in, not in as a separate nation but independence within a confederation um help me out on that one okay it has been for years as as all my adult life i'll i've been involved in like a, have an interest in politics and even the most pro independence party has always been suggesting that what they are they want to know what what they want they are looking for is the right to decide it's okay within the right to decide it should be the option of independence but they have always that's from the 17th and 18th they want they, what they are looking for is the right to decide then once you have the right to decide then you can decide what you want to do but that's what he has been like not forthcoming by the Spanish. It's like okay, they may decide the wrong thing, kind of thing. Yeah. And is violence over? Yes, definitely okay. it is. I don't think that there is a way back on, uh, on that. And if you look at the politics lately in the, the, the Basque country, is working it very well for the pro-independence parties. Yeah. 
Well, that's the positive note that we want to conclude on. We started off talking about the ugliness of violence. Let's talk about the positivity of uh, development and uh, bridge building. So, Inyaki Uruguayan, thanks for sharing with us the 75th anniversary of Ghana.